what I believe is the most important thing in a in anyone, but especially men that want to be successful, want to do anything with their lives, even women too, a hundred percent. But mm-hmm. just as a man, specifically towards men, is going to be self confidence, yeah. right? Self confidence is easily the most important thing, and that's all mm-hmm. psychology as well. Guess what? You study psychology, you can look into everything. Self confidence, boom. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah. But um, too bad psychology, like you know. Trying to get a job with a psychology degree is basically hell on earth. That sucks. Um, I wouldn't get a degree in it. I'm just saying study it. But the most important thing is motivation, which comes from having self-confidence. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that I always preach is going to be in order to improve self-confidence, you have to challenge yourself. And with those challenges will come failure. Yeah. Right? We talked about it earlier in the week, and I want to get your guys' thoughts on it and say what you think. But you cannot be afraid of failure if you want to make any progress in life yeah. whatsoever. I think that's True. something that we talked about earlier. In, yeah, literally early in the week that, yeah, we literally cannot be afraid of failure because only from failure we learn and we experience and we process it and we win. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. that simple. It's that simple. It's just experience, it's experiencing those losses. And you, you don't even have to put it as a loss. You literally can just... Put it as a learning experience. Exactly. You know, it, it's it's the way I apply it into the market as well, into the stock market, <clears throat> it, to where it's not a loss, but what did I learn from this? This is a learning experience, and each time you know I apply that not only to the market but to every everyday life, and you know, I guess it's just the way you per- your mind perceives something. If you take it as a loss, that's how you you know you're gonna you're gonna feel. It, yeah. It's gonna make you feel like an L. because your entire life is going to be your entire life you're taught to not take losses right yeah so if you perceive something in your head that is a failure even if it's small like i don't know whatever anyways even if it's a small failure couldn't think of an example fast enough yeah like failing to test right if you think about it as a loss you will be afraid of it but if you change the perception of your head into okay, this is a learning experience. I'll grow from it. Yep. If That's the thing, right? If your main goal is growth, I think automatically you'll think of failures as learning experiences. But if you are locked in a mindset where like you don't care about growth, you're just going with the flow, you'll always think about losses as something you need to run from almost. Yeah, and it, you're not going to truly enjoy the process that, you know, whatever you're doing, like working out or a skill that you're trying to learn, you're not going to truly enjoy that process if all you're looking for is the end value goal. Yeah. You, you know, and that's that's something that's very important to me. Yeah. Is, is the process, not the end value goal. It should be for everybody, you know, honestly. Yeah. Unless if it's like a sport. I mean, even then. Yeah. What do you, you know? Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Anytime you lose, for example, like you said in sports, anytime you lose, the goal is to keep trying to improve, get better. Yeah. You're going to come out with a win and one yeah. eventually, you know. Just yeah, keep going. I mean. But honestly, like when it comes down to it, I've talked to you guys a little bit about it, about how, for example, for me, right, I want to succeed so bad at what, I, what I'm doing or whatever that I don't want to fail. And that's where it becomes an issue because that starts to cloud me too a little too much. To a point was like, if I fail, I'm never gonna succeed. Like that's that's where it gets bad, honestly. Is when that uh like your your need to succeed makes you scared to fail. In the best way I can put it. Yeah, uh, you know that's something like mentally, you have to change, right? Yeah. Because like, it's because you fail doesn't mean you're not gonna succeed. Right. Right. It's not like there are there's two paths you either fail or you succeed it's like no you're going to fail and then you're going to succeed and then it's a winding road yeah. of like ups and downs it's right it's like shooting your shot with a hundred girls <laughs> one, <laughs> of <them's gotta laughs> one of them's got to go with me hey one of them got to go with me bro it's got to happen yeah. yeah it's like you know if you're doing like sales calls one of them's bound to you know yeah. say yes mm-hmm. so it's like yeah failure yeah. i mean for the love of who was it i want to say it was uh who wrote harry potter uh, why can't I remember that name? I'm so dumb. J.K. Rowling. You're right. Yes, yes thank I you. Think, <laughs> I, I think it was Harry Potter, right? Yeah. Uh, it was either that or so. I think it was Harry Potter, though. One of the honestly, one of the most well-known, famous books, 
movie series, whatever, right? How many times does she get turned down Ooh, for a yeah. publisher? How hella many times. times? Yeah. Hella times. And all it took was one to take a chance. And, and it's it, just like that. See, but that's what I'm saying, right? People don't look at that. People only care about the end goal. Yeah. Every single successful people ever has said that you cannot be afraid of failure. You should like strive for it almost. Yeah. But yet people don't listen to that. It's uh, and they fail once and they give up. Yeah. Another reason to that is a lack of patience. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. We live. Yeah. In, we live in a society that has no. We live in a society. We, I mean, when you live where everything you want is on your phone or whatever you want, you can just get it in a heartbeat. It's gonna. I feel like it's gonna make your mentality like that. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. There's not much you can. It's like what you say. You have to like change that part of you. Yeah. Which I ain't. It's gonna be hard. Oh, that's a no lot of doubt. work. Changing anything about you is yeah. not easy. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the hardest thing you can do. But why why would you cheat yourself, right? Why would you instead of working on yourself, right? The most important thing, because at the end of the day, you own, when you sad as this is, when you're on your deathbed, all you have left is you mm-hmm. and some god, right? That's all you have left. Yeah. You are the only person that you rely on, really. So why would you cheat yourself and not try to change yourself, even if it's hard? Oh, I remember because people are lazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah true. Uh, before we before we go any further, I just want to mention before we uh, go too far from it, there was a quote, right? Mm-hmm. I have it saved on my phone. Uh, Jim Irsay, the um, he is the Indianapolis Colts owner. Mm-hmm. His family has been ha- made the Colts. Okay, this man's like eighty years old. <laughs> um. <laughs> He was on a, a podcast that I watch mm-hmm. or a show that I watch. And uh, they were just talking about like him being a billionaire, right? Because all the NFL owners are extremely successful people. And he, this quote I have saved on my phone, he said, if, if you can't fail at your goals, they aren't big enough. If you're facing goals that you aren't failing at, and you're comfortable with achieving that goal, they aren't big enough if you can't fail at them. Yeah, I like that. Here's a better quote. <clears throat> if you knew that you can dream whatever you want on this world, and you knew that you couldn't fail, how far would you dream? I feel like that's a better quote for that. Yeah. Because it's like, well, at that point, it's endless, you know? And then you, you make the goals, and then... You just try to reach them, and if you fail, it's not really failing. If yeah. It's, yeah. All it is, it's learning experiences. You yeah. Know? Because, like, at the end of the day, whatever goal you want to achieve, whatever dream you have, you there's gonna become there's gonna come risk with it. You're gonna have to take a leap of faith. You're gonna have to take the risk. It may sound corny, generic, or whatever. A bird is the biggest example of that because the only way they learn to fly is by falling a few times. That's the only way they learn to fly. And. Mm-hmm. No, 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 go ahead, man. Go. One thing is that the way I look at it is when I'm laying on my deathbed and, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, you know, reflecting back on my life. A lot of people, you know, they regret a lot of things that they didn't do when they were younger. I should have done this when I had more energy, you know, when I had more time. That's not a point to where I want to get to in life. You know, that Mm -hmm. as we're young, I feel like we should have failures. You know, because we, we have so much time to experience so many new things. Yeah. So I feel like if you're at a if you're young if you're a young age, you know, person, I feel like try as many things as you can if, and if you fail, it, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You you get mm-hmm. me? Honestly, that's that's what I believe is that I don't want to regret anything that I, I won't try. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. That's what I'm that's where I'm gonna end. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, like you, like you said, like you, both of you said, when, when it comes to like being on your deathbed and stuff, you want to take those risks because the number one thing that people feel when on their deathbed isn't being scared or anything, it's regret yeah. because they didn't take the risk, yeah. which is why the graveyard is the richest place in the world because so many dreams, so many hopes where people didn't take those risks and leaps of faith, they all died there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's truly sad because if if people would just take that risk, take that jump, whatever, the world could literally be spun on its head, and you have no idea what you're. Even if you may think, okay, I'm just one person, I have, I can't control, I can't do anything in this life. You can. You just have to. You have to just take the risk. Yeah, just jump. That's the thing, right? Like, 
Don't jump, don't jump. You know. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't say that. Bad term, bad term. Well, you, you never know what doors are going to open for you when, you know, yeah. you you risk it, you know? Yeah. That's why that's why tons of people as well, like a bunch of these successful people, they say, look at your present. Make the most of your situation mm-hmm. right now. Even if it's not what you want to do down the line, right? You're working a job that you don't enjoy, um, something like that. Make the most of it while you're there because you don't know what door is going to open. But not only that, being at something you don't like to do will push you to do something you want to do. Mm-hmm. And working a job that you don't want to do will teach you the work ethic you need to have, that sort of thing. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're at 16, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I think that's something I did well was when I was 16 and worked at a fucking grocery store, I still worked my ass off because... It was just the fact that you are working your hardest and that will train your brain into yeah. working as hard as it can. It's literally just, it goes back to the mindset to, you know, literally the mindset. You yeah. know, it, if you have the way you look at things, perception, the word of the day is perception. True. True. Yeah. I think it's just about changing mindsets of people is like very until you do it the first time. Once you do something, I feel like you change your mindset truly for the first time, regardless of the reason, whether that's because of a breakup, uh, because something happened in your life, and you change your mindset for the first time, you'll realize it's hard, but it's not impossible. Yeah. So I think some people, if they've been living their whole life under the same mindset, right? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do this job because you know, it's, it's stupid. I don't want to do it. Uh, I don't want to be in this field for my entire life, anything like that. Yeah. If you would change your mindset one time, you'll see that everything will open for you. You'll be able to work harder. You'll be happier, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You don't have to constantly be in this loop of, oh, I'm not exactly where I want to be. So I'm just going to waste my time while I'm here. So here, here's a good, uh, how do I say it? Good thing that you could practice is that since we're creatures of habit, uh, a good way to start is doing menial tasks, making your bed, mm-hmm. cleaning your house, you know, s- small things like that. You achieve, you know, y- you achieve more in your day, and it makes you feel more productive, making you yeah. feel more, you know, energetic to get the next thing going, and and it builds momentum, you know. Yeah. And so, since we are, you know, since we uh, we're creatures of habit, we do everything. On a daily basis, the patterns we, you know, if we break that pattern, you know, and we do something new, the first three days are gonna suck. Honestly, yeah. the first three days are going to suck. But if you could stick through it and challenge yourself, you can see better results, better, yeah. more things for you, yeah. way up ahead in life. You know. See, that reminds me. I don't remember who said it. I want to say it was some type of marine receiving some reward or making a speech or whatever. It, that just reminds me of he was basically talking just like that. He was saying little victories like waking up, making your bed, little victories will eventually lead up to those bigger victories. And it all just starts from the small one changing, your, like you said, the mindset and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those small things are like a foundation. Yeah. So how could you build something big if the foundation isn't even done? It's going to crumble. Yeah. yeah. Just doing those little things helps your brain feel more productive, like you said but also just get in the habit of doing things you don't want to do. No one wants to make their bed, but the fact that you wake up every morning and do it anyways Mm -hmm. will trick your brain into, okay, I don't really want to do this. Like, let's say you're a, you're, you're a movie writer. I don't want to write the script today. Well, too fucking bad. Like your brain will trick yourself and to think, okay, too bad. I'm doing it anyways because it has to be done. I need to get paid. Yeah, I, it has to be done. It has to do that. I have to do this for my growth. Yeah, that sort of thing. Motive behind it, you know. Yeah, and that's what discipline come is more important than motivation. A hundred percent. Don't feel motivated to do it, but you you know you need to do it because that will push you past anything. It's yeah. kind of like. So like Ray Lewis, right? One thing that I really like about him, one thing I try to keep in my head is a why. Why do you do what you do? What pushes you to keep going there? If you don't feel motivated, remember your why, keep your discipline and push through it. Yeah. Because in the end, you will have results. You'll be happy you did. David Goggins, a freaking beast of a person. 
probably one of the people will probably use him as a as an example of peak physical human capability or whatever, right? This man's crazy. He told he says he live on TV, he told him, uh, or Pox, whatever, he's a procrastinator. He hates doing what he does. He doesn't want to do it. But he knows he has to do it. Yeah. So he gets up. He doesn't want to go on that eight mile run. Yeah. He procrastinates the last minute. He's like, shoot, but I need to do it. I gotta get it. Gets out there, runs eight miles. This man is the freaking beast. I swear he's gonna run to Mars before we even land there. Yeah. This man. Oh yeah. It's all. It's all about tricking your brain. Yeah. It is genuinely about tricking your brain at first, but mm-hmm. then it will turn into you're not tricking your brain. You just genuinely want to do it. Yeah. Because you remember your why. Even the days you don't want to do it, doing it shows that you want to do it to an extent because you mm-hmm. see the bigger picture. It's it's about living in the moment in the present, but visualizing your future, yeah. Yeah. right? Like visualizing is super important as well because like even from a kid, what what did every sports coach tell you? Visualize yourself making that catch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Visualize yourself making that shot. See it before it even comes. That's what I think kids get taught a lot. It just becomes cliche. Yeah. And then like gets put in like the not wrong scenarios, but like you don't apply it to other things. Like I know already. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, I was told that in sports, right? Yeah. So like you don't even yeah. think about it. But like what this coach told you is way bigger than sports. Mm-hmm. He's telling you to visualize what you want to do. Because if you visualize yourself doing it, you will do it. Yeah. And you could apply that to even deeper in sports. I think that's why sports are incredible. Mm-hmm. Don't take your eye off the ball. Apply that exact same thing to your, your real focus. life. Yeah. You, know, your you focus. take your, you get the catch, but you take your eyes off that that throw was something from the universe or whatever. That ball is the opportunity, and you turn your head. There you go. It's, you can apply everything in certain areas that you learned as a kid, and just think about it in a different lens, and then you have a you have a new perception on your entire life yeah. and your and discipline, everything kind of crazy to think about. Hey, David Goggins, stay hard. Some real talk yeah. right there. Honestly, real talk. Honestly. Hey, glad this conversation There's, came that's up. That's what I'm saying. Talking about it earlier. Yeah. I think yeah. some people are just like, they think they're young, so they don't have to change as well. Yeah. They have an excuse <laughs> not to change because they're young, but you should, be, you should see it as, Rather than an opportunity for you not to change because you're young, you're young, so you have time to change. Mm-hmm. Un- yeah. un- unlike if you change when you're in your 30s, then you have a midlife crisis. And, 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 and you already have people that things, depend on you, yeah. stuff like yeah. that. You don't want to go through that, honestly. No, hell no. I've seen too many examples that, honestly, I'd rather deal with everything right now at this young age than later on in life and I can just enjoy it. Find your calling, you know? find your stuff now because then you'll set yourself up yep. so that when you are more mature in your 30s, it's not like, oh, this is my first time doing it. You're like, oh, this is my fourth time doing it. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna just do it right. And you're way better handling pressure, yeah. honestly. You know, yeah. when you can yeah. handle it for a long time, you're already, you know, building pressure. You can already handle, you know, different things coming at you. Mm-hmm. And just years of experience will add on to that, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything's about experience. Yeah. You can't be afraid of failure because you just experienced something. Yeah. Okay, I, I did this wrong. I'm going to do it right so that I can build on that. Yep. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like, throughout your... The most successful people in the world still have failures. Like, you don't think Elon and Jeff Bezos, like, try to do something with Amazon or SpaceX that fails? What? Hell no. Yeah. They... Especially Elon, because he's doing stuff that, like, is has never been done before yeah you think he's come he's doing the right thing every time no 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 he don't know yeah he don't know until and, he I gets mean, there and know? the argument is that oh elon isn't doing anything he just has his engineers okay these engineers are getting paid eight figures to do this you don't think they're failing as well yeah like elon's the top dog but you think these people under him aren't also in the top one percent they're in the top one percent and they're still failing yeah. They're working day and night. Yeah, overnight. it's yeah. like these dudes are working day and night and they're failing. But, oh, it's because they're engineers. They're they're supposed to fail. Yeah, I mean, then you're an engineer. There's Hello. a light at that <laughs> end of the tunnel. Yeah. You know, you go through darkness, you go through the storm first. When the storm passes, you see the sunshine and you feel more appreciative of everything you have. Yep. And I feel like that's the real, the real success that you feel.